Basketball is back on FS1, and they arrived early for Week Zero in Maverick Stadium in Logan, Utah. The defending Mountain West champions are back in action as Utah State hosts UConn on a beautiful day in the northeast part of Utah. Alex Faust, Petros Papadakis here with you. We'll hear from Dean Blandino as well. It's a new era for UConn as Jim Mora takes over for the Huskies, his first game as head coach in stores, but he takes on a really difficult program in Utah State, the defending Mountain West champions, led by Logan Bonner, one of nine super seniors on the roster, returning for a fifth year of eligibility, his 26th consecutive start, leading this explosive offense. Coming in from the south, from Arkansas State with Coach Anderson to take the West by storm. Caught everybody off guard in the conference last year, getting the ball out, very competitive, very passionate, nifty with his legs, and he led one of the great seasons in Utah State history, looking to do even better in 2022. Can't wait to see this kid take some snaps. They're gonna need a big time defensive turnaround at UConn, and this might be the guy to lead it for them, Jackson Mitchell, the top returning tackler for the Huskies. Coach Mora's name synonymous with defense he's coached a lot of great linebackers over the years Sam Mills a Hall of Famer comes to mind he loves this kid Jackson Mitchell who's been a mainstay at UConn productive track tackling run defense great instincts he's gonna have his work cut out for him against an explosive offense today in Logan Utah State coming off a historic 2021 season 11 wins for the Aggies a bowl victory a conference championship and they are looking for more in 2022 we kick things off in Logan next Eighty seven degree day in Logan, Utah. It's warm down to the field heat rating radiating off the field though We've heard it's a little bit cooler than the season opener last year for UConn when they were at Fresno State and it was in the 90s Blake Anderson Leading things for Utah State. What a job he's done. This program was in tatters at the end of the 2020 season What a resurrection from one win to 11 over the course of one season and Jim Moore First time as a head coach in five years after six seasons at UCLA. One of the great student atmospheres in college football. They turn out not just for football, but basketball, everything at this university. The students are into it. Utah State will get the ball first. UConn won the toss. They deferred to the second half. Don't look now, Alex, but we are in the golden age of Utah State football. And it's been a few different coaches, a few different styles, but Blake Anderson and what they brought to the table starting last year has been a shock and a lot of fun to watch. Despite winning the conference, despite returning their quarterback and a whole slew of players on defense, they are missing some key receivers from last year. We'll talk about that. As we go along, Devin Tompkins, Brandon Bowling, 3,300 plus yards between them, no longer with the Aggies. And they were picked to finish third this season in their division. A little bit of disrespect, perhaps, for the defending champions of the Mountain West Conference. Noe Rulis, the sophomore from West Hartford, Connecticut, will kick things off momentarily for UConn. And we are underway. Terrell Vaughn will let it bounce out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And Logan Bonner jogs out onto the field. The super senior transferred him from Arkansas State when Blake Anderson took over the job here. And Bonner has been fantastic. And he's had a lot of pretty good receivers to work with. And it's the offense. They have a very fast attacking style offense. The defense is the same way. They complement each other pretty well and he's the guy with the confidence and the swagger to get it done consistently week in and week out he showed that last season Calvin Tyler jr. lines up next to him in the backfield the Oregon State transfer and Bonner rolling to his right on the first play from scrimmage connects with Brian Cobbs at about the 33 yard line tackled by Ian Swenson we talked about filling in some of those gaps Last year with the receivers that left, Brian Cobbs, a transfer from Maryland, one of those guys, productive already. Gain of nine, second down and one. They'll hand it off to Tyler. And Tyler will move the sticks. Malik Dixon on the stop. 
as we give you the lineups here. First with Utah State. Four starters return on their offensive line, one of the most experienced O-lines in the nation, a combined 95 games of experience for Utah State. But again, the question is at receiver as Tyler gets another carry here and will get a couple of yards on first down. Playing with a lot of pace, and that's what you expect from Utah State with the altitude. They can really take advantage of it, and Calvin Tyler, they say, in a lot better shape this year than last. Led Utah State with 884 yards on the ground last year. We'll play action here. Bonner will take off and scamper across the 40-yard line. Brandon Boyer-Randall, the transfer from Texas Tech, on the stop, and it's third down. Good job by Randall kind of breaking down and making that tackle. Bonner pretty nifty with his feet. You saw him looking downfield, looking downfield. He came off about two receivers and then took off for three. Third and long here for the Aggies. They were 44% on third down last year, second best of the conference, top 21 in the nation. Bonner across the middle and dropped. And that was nearly reeled in by Kyle Van Leeuwen. Chris Sheeran in coverage for UConn. The Aggies will punt. They had the look they wanted. They brought the back out on a swing route to kind of spread things and was a clear throwing lane for Van Leeuwen to catch that ball. A wide receiver should be able to catch that right above his head. Good job by UConn forcing the punt against a great offense. Steven Kotzenly returns as the punter for Utah State. And he boots this one away. Back to receive is Keelan Marion, and it will take a UConn bounce and roll all the way to the 21-yard line. So the net on the punt, not that great. All things considered, is 37 yards. And the UConn offense will take the field here. Taquan Roberson is out there with the offense. Question mark of who would start a quarterback, but all signs just watching the reps and hearing from those at UConn's practice is that Roberson stood out during the offseason and into training camp. Their best option, the most ready to handle this offense. They say he's a real study rat in Coach Charlton's office. We'll see if it pays dividends here in a hostile environment. Roberson, the Penn State transfer. From the 21-yard line, a handoff on first down, and there goes Nathan Carter, top returning rusher for UConn. And a great start for the Huskies. A very nice, patient mesh there, and Roberson does a good job of staring down that end. Byron Vaughn's giving it the last second, and Carter knows what to do with it, get it upfield. Give him 13 yards and a first down right off the hop for UConn. They went into Clemson last year and had a 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. So don't be surprised if they can rattle off some explosive plays. And there goes Carter again. Carter finally hauled down inside the Utah State 15. Hunter Reynolds brought him down. But here come the Huskies early in this game. The sophomore out of Rochester, look at this turn he makes on the cutback right there. Sees it beautifully and then keeps it skinny to get away from the linebackers in pursuit. That's A.J. Vongpachan, and he just shows his speed. A huge start running the ball for UConn. A stop against an explosive offense and rolling on the ground to start this one off in Logan. 13 and then 52 on the ground for Carter. And they're set up with a first down of the Utah State 14. Roberson takes the snap, hands it off to Brian Bruton. He was the guy who had that 99-yard kickoff return against Clemson last year. And he'll burrow his way forward for a yard, second down. We'll see how deep they go at the tailback position. They obviously want to run the ball. They've shown that early. There's Coach Charlton calling the plays. Bruton's the second-string guy, it looks like. And Nathan Carter is going to be the male carrier, but needs a little bit of a break after that long run. I would, too. Nick Charlton is 33 years of age, the offensive coordinator for UConn, coming over from the University of Maine, out of the Colonial. This will be thrown away by Roberson. Aaron Turner, the intended target, and it's third down. I like the decision by Roberson. He's shown a lot of patience to start this game, especially going over to his right. First with the mesh on the first play of the game for the 13-yard gain that time, not trying to force anything, throwing it away knowing that you already have a good drive going. First pass attempt for the Huskies. 
But it is third and 12. Two back set with Carter and Bruton for UConn. A swing here to Carter. And Carter has a block. Gets down to the five yard line. He is shy of the line to gain. A.J. Carter for UConn, no, or for Utah State, no relation, made the stop. Well, they are really using these backs, and this is a free release, and it's a screen, just they're, a flare screen. And they're going to go for it here. Roberson pushing the pile. I think he has it. He does. Yeah, he got it. They went right under uh, center and gave Utah State a little bit of a taste of their own medicine with some pace after the nice screen with Sen leading through. Roberson handling his business on fourth and short, and now Coach Morris' team with a great opportunity to score a touchdown. Here's where things will get a little tricky for UConn. They had only 12 touchdowns on 28 red zone trips last year. Well, this has been a phenomenal opening drive. It's Carter again, and he pinballs his way to the two. And this is a team in UConn, we talked to Coach Mora, desperate to win. A real chip on their shoulder, and we can go through it throughout the afternoon, but it's been hard times in stores yeah. in recent years. And Coach Mora is a passionate guy, a nuts and bolts football guy, and they, they look inspired to start this one out, Alex. Robert Burns lining up as a blocking fullback here. They're going to hand it off to him, Pierce. Stop made just shy of the goal line. It looked like he had the, the push and the leg drive to get in, but they're going fast. You yeah. see Charlton calling play. They want to go now. Roberson gets a push. Does he have it? Touchdown. A flag comes in. The initial signal was for touchdown, but let's see the call here. I think they got word. the defense coming on and off yeah. with the substitution there, Alex. So this is probably a declinable penalty. Offside, number three, defense. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. What a start. A UConn team that had just one win all of last season. They have come into Logan and scored a punch in the mouth early in this game. They kick the ball away, they defend. They get a punt, and they ran, marched down the field with just some short passes from Roberson, some good runs, good decision-making, especially the throwaway we saw closer to the goal line. And it translates into six points, maybe seven, for the Huskies. What a start to the Jim Mora era. Tremendous start. 79-yard drive, 69 came on the ground. And it is seven. Nothing to the Huskies on the road in an intimidating environment, but they have silenced the crowd in Logan. Nathan Carter leading the way for UConn, and they're up 7 zip. Who saw this come? Not me. Mm. UConn came in roughly a 26 point underdog. I actually caught the attention of head coach Jim Moore during the week. He wasn't asked about it. Unprompted, he brought it up. And, you know, he, I don't think he's walked into many games in his career where his team has been that much of an underdog. Well, he's but, got a lot to prove yeah. uh, to himself. He, this team's got a lot to prove to each other, and he loves it at UConn, he says. He, he likes the vibe. He likes having an impact on the young people, and they've had an impact early in this game. There's no doubt about that. Reset the ball here. Where's Lucy? <laughs> We're only in week zero, Petros. <laughs> Jordan Wilmore back to receive this kickoff. Well, now if you're Utah State, I don't know if you poke the bear or the, the Aggie in this case, uh, how angry they will get and what they will do in response. Well, they're not a lot of a respond to the opponent type of style with Utah State. They're more of a we do what we do. We're going to get out there and attack you. And offensively, they just couldn't get the, the motorcycle started. Be another touchback to start. 
But they'll keep coming, Alex. Bonner will keep coming throughout the game. They will take their shots, and they will not go quietly or be run over. And don't forget about the altitude. It is a huge factor playing in Logan for this team and, and for the team from UConn. It could get rough. This is also not necessarily new territory. They trailed at the half in eight of their 14 games, as you saw there. The first quarter, they would fall behind quite regularly. We were joking with Blake Anderson, their coach. It made him fun to watch. <laughs> Certainly not from his standpoint, fun to coach. So on first down, there's Calvin Tyler Jr. to rip off a nice run to begin the drive. Durante Jones with a stop after a 13-yard pickup and a first down. Tyler Jr.'s got great acceleration, and you saw some of it there, just really quick into the second level. And the Aggies working quickly, as they are wont to do. Tyler bounces off his lineman and takes off. Past midfield in the Yukon territory. Wrestled down just before the 40-yard line by Caleb Anthony. A 22-yard run for Tyler. And the Aggies' run game is in gear. The reason he's their number one guy is just that. He can stop his feet and then get started right away in a hurry and eat up a lot of yards. See if he can get three in a row. This is where the altitude and the conditioning really hurt Calvin Ty Tyler Jr. last year. Spotted the ball at the 40-yard line. Tyler again. That's about two or three here. Well, they feel here, much as you know, any team that plays at altitude, the later you get in a game, the more of an advantage it will be. They're conditioning, they practice hard, they practice fast. Yeah, it's a big part of their style. They use the place, their location, as an advantage. They run a great deal in practice. They have an attacking style. They sprint to the line of scrimmage very often. They sprint from the sideline. It's just Coach Anderson's style. Tyler checks out. Pilate Makakona, the senior, checks in. They'll throw it. And right along the near sideline, Brian Cobbs reels it in. That'll move the sticks. Second target for Cobbs, second catch. They're still trying to find that production. Who's going to step up at wide receiver? in lieu of Tompkins, who was so special last year. Nine-yard gain at the 29-yard line. Here is Makakona, who picks up a couple on first down. Ball came out late. UConn says they have it. Well, coming away with the ball is Jackson Mitchell. What's the call here? That ball the ruling is was fumble out. recovered ruling by the UConn. It was a fumble recovered by the defense. Wow. First down, Connecticut. Timeout. And another plot twist early. A turnover from the Aggies. In a primetime showdown, Penn State faces Purdue. Are you kidding me? He's going down. Coverage begins Thursday night at 7 Eastern on Fox. Advin, a solid drive for Utah State. Gets ripped away, literally, by Jackson Mitchell. We told you he was a playmaker. Look at Jackson Mitchell beat the block, come back, get the hands on the ball from Makakona, and then have the strength, which is incredible, to pull it away and keep possession to make it a turnover. What a play by the special linebacker for the Huskies. So UConn back to work. Up 7-0 on the road. In Logan, this is, uh, we're not going to sugarcoat it. This is a stunning start, not just for the visiting team, but for the home team as well. Well, you would expect Utah State's offense to be a little more crisp to start this game. There's no doubt about it. And maybe you would expect a little bit more of a deer in the headlights feel from a UConn team with half a new roster and a brand new head coach. But it has not played out that way so far. Still early. Yep. UConn didn't even play a season in 2020. Didn't do a spring season, didn't do anything. They set the year out, had to rebuild the program. Roberson's going to keep this. And he'll try to shake a tackle. That comes up about three yards shy here. It looks like An he got a little shaken here up. To Roberson at the end of the play. That's not good. Yeah, he ducked his head and. Oh. Was that Michael Anyawu? Yeah. That he was one-on-one uh, -on -one with. And he takes the physical brunt of this collision here. He tries to make a move, and Anyawu did a good job just getting right to his legs and getting him down. He's holding his right knee after the play. Yeah, it looks like he landed awkwardly the second time. His foot kind of hit the ground. 
Mm. They do have two other quarterbacks that we should probably see today in some form, one or the other. Kale Millen from Washington of the great Millen family, and then Zion Turner, one of the biggest recruits in UConn history. And it looks like it's going to be him, Alex. So he's the youngest of the four quarterbacks on their roster. True freshman, St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Florida. Prolific high school program. They like him. They feel he will be a starter at some point, but doubt that they considered using him in this capacity this early. We knew we were going to see him today. But early on, he's going to have to step in here off the bench, third down and three after Roberson, the Penn State transfer, leaves with an injury. In the gun, Turner hands it off. And it'll be a first down for the Huskies. First time we see for UConn, Devon, uh, Devontae Houston carrying the ball today. Yeah, Houston on the end around with Valentin Sen leading through. He already had a great lead block on the first drive on a screen. And Jim Mora keeping the ball on the ground with his offense and Nick Charlton's play calling, but also exploiting the whole field side to side. First down for the Huskies. And again, they'll go to the run game. This time it's Bruton as UConn steadily approaching midfield here. Well, you mentioned Bruton in the return game and that 99-yard return he had against Clemson last year. He's also from St. Thomas Aquinas, a Miami guy. Mostly worked on kick return duty last year, Bruton. He had two kick returns for a touchdown. This time for second most in FBS. Two back set here with Bruton and Carter. And it's Carter. Beg your pardon, it is Bruton. He gets the call. They bring Bruton across the formation here. Just a zone look with Carter kind of leading through, and he makes a brilliant cut underneath. And this UConn run game isn't going away. That's a great tackle by A.J. Carter to stop what would have been a first down. They are inches away. They're going to mark it about a yard short. Third but and one here. This clock running, yeah. short runs. This is what frustrates Logan Bonner standing on the sideline. Carter again. Well, this UConn team that had an average possession time last year of 25 minutes and 49 seconds. Instead, they have control of the ball here. And Jim Mora looks really comfortable playing in third and one. He brought in Robert Burns, a fullback, and led through. And right now, they are punching Utah State in the mouth at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. So the prior play, they actually had given them a first down. So it was a first down play. That nets one, and now it's second and nine as they approach midfield. Turner drops back to pass, escapes the pressure, throws near side, picked off. Hunter Reynolds gets the takeaway. Flag on the play. Obviously an ill-advised throw from the freshman. See Ephraim Bonda, the defensive coordinator for Utah State in your picture. And again, a team that trailed after the first quarter in more than half their games last year. But might this be the first turning point? There are two fouls on the play. Holding number 71 offense. That penalty is declined. After the interception, personal foul. Blindside block, number 17 of the return team. That's a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Utah State. That's a second-generation player, Luke Marion, but it is a turnover by UConn. They might have corrected the number on the penalty, but we'll sort that out when we come back. First mistake from the Huskies today, and it's the freshman quarterback, Zion Turner. What's the trick? 
Here's what happened with the pick on the freshman, Zion Turner, Alex. Hunter Reynolds, right there in the middle of the screen, number 27, right above the referee, is going to read the eyes of Turner, and you see him drifting with him, drifting with him, and he absolutely knows where that ball is going. Turner had no idea his very first pass ever in college football, picked off by the graduate transfer from Michigan. Three seasons at Michigan for Reynolds. And a big play early here. UConn only led by two possessions in two games last season. An opportunity to go up by two possessions. But the turnover gives Utah State the ball back here. After all the penalty yardage, they are back in their own territory. And a throw to the near side is caught by Brian Cobbs. Cobbs tackled just shy of midfield. But there is a flag back by the line of scrimmage. Looked like a free play for Bonner, and he knew it. Number 96, defense. The penalty is declined. The result of a play is a first down. Brian Cobbs, Maryland transfer, fifth-year senior. So Four far, seasons. he's been the target, right? Yeah. Four seasons in College Park. He's a pretty good receiver for them, used sparingly. 15-yard pickup. The previous play is under further review. Well, as far as the offsides goes, it was Pokesi Vakauta that was caught in the neutral zone there after the clap from Bonner. Looking at the catch here is what we understand. Yeah, that heel came down the white shoe and the white paint. Ah, yeah, that's close. Two pretty good shots of it. It, it. it looks like that heel came down out of bounds. What a nice yeah. shot we have there. Good on the replay booth, Mark Madsen. So instead of uh, the first down, it's likely that the Aggies will take the penalty. Yep. 439 to go. Uh, what a series of major swings in this game. Obviously, UConn with a 79 yard drive to begin. Forced fumble on Utah State's second drive. Then Roberson gets injured, leading to the turnover by the freshman, Utah State, looking for their first points of the season. another look. Cobbs kind of gets that leg out, that left leg sort of splits his legs to avoid the tackle from Anthony. And it looks like that's what made it what looks to be an incompletion. So would have been a second and seven, or the play was a second and seven. It would be a 16-yard catch if this is a rule to catch. And Is there anything definitive here that you see? I mean, uh, it, it looks like his heel is out of bounds. Uh, it, it really does. And you look at uh, the couple of the other shots, and it's even more kind of definitive. All right, Dean Blandino's back with us. Hi, Dean. Good to have you with us once again. Uh, what are you thinking here? What do you see? Hey, guys. Well, let's hear from Derek Anderson first, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. After review, the receiver's foot was out of bounds prior to catching the pass. It's an incomplete pass. However, we will enforce the offsize penalty on number 96. It will be second down at the 35-yard line. Yeah, so Petros was all over it, that left foot. You talk about a toe heel. If it's a normal step, the entire foot has to be in bounds, and it looked like the left heel touched out of bounds and that's why they reversed it to incomplete and that's a big moment for the referee whenever they can say however in the announcement they love that <laughs> <laughs> makes them sound smart <laughs> exactly thank you Dean it was so Dalbot all, Gordeen that was the culprit after all that it's a second and two after they enforce the offside penalty and the ball at the Utah State 35 Bonner hands it off and 
Tyler is unable to escape. He's frustrated. Jackson Mitchell again coming up with a big play and it sets up third down. He is a sure tackler and long out there on the edge. Quickly they're back to work. Tyler bounces off a man but can't get to the next level. Mitchell is there again. Ian Swenson there as well. And Jackson Mitchell, who finished 12th in all of FBS football in total tackles last season, has been an impact player for UConn once again. He came from the other side. It was Boyer Randall with the initial hit that slowed the play down, but really nice pursuit from Coach Mora, and he loves it. And after the turnover, what a stand by this UConn defense that was the eighth worst in all of FBS football by total points allowed last year and among the worst in total yardage allowed last year over 450 per game allowed they're standing firm early in this game fair catch signaled by Keelan Marion and it will roll to the 21 yard line where the Aggies down it and the Huskies will go back to work leading 7-0 All right, tonight, it's Baseball Night in America on Fox. Ronald Acuna Jr. leads the Braves into a huge showdown against Paul Goldschmidt of the Cardinals. Giants take on Carlos Correa and the Twins. 6.30 Eastern is when coverage begins. Check your local listings for the games in your area. Wild card races have been fascinating to watch. The Braves have been on fire for the last month, it feels like. They're chasing down the Mets in the NL East. Well, for UConn, they are back to work, up 7-0 on the road. And here's Nathan Carter. Will he be caught? He's still on his feet past midfield into Utah State territory. And another chunk play for Nathan Carter, finally pushed out by Kaleo Neves after a huge game. Where is the Aggies' defense? Look at that hole. A beautiful lead block there. And he is out in the open, breaks the tackle of Gervin Hall easily and Carter is ripping off big runs in the first half here 44 yards for Carter he had a run of 52 to begin the game meanwhile this is Kale Millen and he'll get a first down we thought we might see him for precisely that reason they love his legs Transferred in from FCS Northern Arizona and his first touch of the ball game. These guys are blocking for each other. Look at Bruton leading through with the big block that sprung Millen to get to the edge. A great block by Jacob Flynn on the previous play. UConn is getting after it with a lot of aggression in a very hostile play. 22 yards, Huskies in the red zone. It's a first down and Millen stays in at quarterback. Juggled the snap, trying to surge forward and he can't get away. Sini Tuiaki, redshirt freshman from Salt Lake City, got a hand in there on the tackle. Getting a lot of push with this UConn offensive line. Let's see what happened with Millen here. That looks like a designed quarterback run, kind of like a power, but with the bobbled snap, as you mentioned, Alex, the timing of the play was screwed up and he couldn't get behind his lead block. Utah State averaged 161 rush yards against last year. UConn's already up to 150 today. Here comes Zion Turner back into the game. And again, take on Roberson, if you're just joining us, injured for UConn. He'll throw to the end zone. It is caught. Kalen Marion. But they're going to wave it off. Marion had it initially. It popped out of his hands as he hit the ground. Andre Grayson was there for Utah State. Strong hands contest, Alex, between Marion and Grayson. The ruling on the field is the receiver possessed the ball wow. in the end zone prior to it being stripped out. Touchdown. Now they signal touchdown. So we have uh, dueling signals, but it did look like he had it tucked, and then it came over in his head. Keelan Marion does win the strong hands battle. And he's shaking up. One throw for a pick, another one for a touchdown. Welcome to college football, Zion Turner.
This is stunning stuff. Letting the true freshman quarterback drop back and put it in the air and an accurate ball. That's his second pass. Right. The first one was the interception. Going on the field of a touchdown is under further review. I figured it would be. Just to put into context here for UConn, their last road victory of any kind was 2019. Their last win was in a season opener was 2017. Well, here's Marion. You see him tuck it. He's got it. His elbows down. And Grayson kind of battles with the ball while he's on the ground and seemingly already had possession. Now, remember, this happens a lot faster in real time. We're watching it in slower motion, and we'll talk to Dean about it, I'm sure, but that might be hard to overturn if the ruling on the field is touchdown. All right, Dean, what do you think? Yeah, to me, this is a touchdown. Receiver's going to the ground to make the catch. He maintains control. He rolls over. And that's that time element, the, the time to perform an act common to the game. And then it's the defender that pulls it out after that time element is met. So to me, this is a catch. Great job on the field, getting together, discussing it. Obviously, replay's going to take a second look. But uh, the ruling on the field, to me, should stand. Is there a difference, Dean, or what is the difference between surviving the ground in the NFL versus college football, let's say? Basically the same rule. It's still an element of time, and it doesn't matter if it's in the field of play or the end zone. If you're going to the ground and make the catch, you got to survive the ground or perform an act common to the game, like reach the ball out for the line to gain. Not the case here, but he does survive the ground and roll over. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Keelan Marion is their go-to receiver. A little shaken up after that play, but good strong hands against Andre Grayson there. UConn's largest run last season was 46 yards. Yeah, this is a different football team. I think yeah. we're learning very quickly. Carter already has a run of 44 and 52 today. And with a minute 38 to go in the first quarter, it is 14 nothing for the Huskies. I mentioned it's a new era for UConn and bringing in a, a coach with some name brand credibility. This is Jim Moore's fourth stop as a head coach. Went to the NFC Championship, the Atlanta Falcons to the Seahawks after that, and then to UCLA, where he went to four bowl games. Made a mark at UCLA, for sure. Well, there's no doubt about it, and he energized that program when he came in. And you're seeing some of that here with UConn. They were immediately more physical. Guys understood their role. People were being very, very diligent at UCLA right when Mora took over. I remember that distinctly, and Brett Huntley had so much success at the quarterback position. This is a much bigger reclamation project for Coach Mora. And what they've done so far in this first quarter has been the stuff of legend in UConn, the Constitution State. Oh, you want to get in the Connecticut trivia. I, <laughs> I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you on that, my friend. Nathan Carter has 120 yards. The entire Utah State offense has 71. Not what you'd expect. L listen to that. I mean, it, it is stunned silence. Yeah, they're stunned here in Logan. This is a great game day atmosphere at Maverick Stadium, Merlin Olsen Field. They expect to see a lot of fireworks. And Logan Bonner and his offense unable to really generate that. They've had some throws out to Cobbs. Tyler with a couple bursts here and there, but nothing sustained so far, which is not to say they can't get that engine going in a very quick way. First three possessions for Utah State. Punt, fumble, punt. Bonner throws to the outside and has his man. It's the tight end, Josh Sturzer. And he'll get within a couple of yards of the sticks. They don't use a lot of the tight ends in the throwing game. Sturzer with only four receptions last year. They get him going in the first quarter here. Give him eight, second down and two. They'll work quickly. They'll keep it on the ground and they'll get the first down. Robert Briggs getting the carry there. Again, Utah State, they lost their two top receivers from last season. 
accounting for 3,300 yards and 31 touchdowns. Terrell Vaughn, his first catch of the game, and Vaughn spins away from an initial tackle, rumbles to near midfield. Price Yates finally brought him down, the redshirt freshman defensive end, as Vaughn picks up a nice gain in the first down. And this is the type of thing that Utah State can do. They move around a little bit in the middle of the field, and now they're playing very fast. 11 yards as Robert Briggs again gets the call, and he's into UConn territory. Clock inside of a minute to go, first quarter. Briggs is the third straight back. We've seen Makakona fumble, product out of Texas. And off again, there goes Briggs. And he's stood up by Chris Schoen in the secondary for UConn. A 15-yard gain, another first down for Utah State. Dangerous tackle there by Schoen, not wrapping up. I thought Briggs was going to bounce off and keep going. Bonner, play action, throws over top of the intended target, Vaughn. Former junior college All-American. They're starting to get some of their pace back, some of their edge back. But they just haven't been able to consistently move this offense, and you'd have to say a big part of it is Coach Mora's defense. 21 seconds left in the quarter. Play clock inside a seven here. Bonner sets up with Briggs to his right. And I hand it off to Briggs. Looking for the edge. Briggs spins away from a tackle and is knocked down at the 30-yard line on a gain of five. And that should take us to the end of the quarter. See if they work quickly here and get another play before the quarter ends. They will not. But what a quarter it was. Wow. For the visiting UConn Huskies, they have not led by more than 10 points at the end of the first quarter in any game since 2015. They are off to a 14-0 start in the altitude in Logan, Utah. Petros, you ready? I am. Biggest sporting event on the planet. Returns to Fox Sports. Christian Pulisic in the U.S., Lionel Messi, Argentina, Cristiano my, Ronaldo in your picture. My Greeks got a team this They're, year. I, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> it's the World Cup, and it's taking place in the holidays this year. The FIFA World Cup live from Qatar starting November 20th on Fox and FS1. And no, they will not be playing in the snow. It's still hot at time of year in Doha. New quarterback for Utah State is Levi Williams, the transfer from Wyoming. He surges ahead here, and it's going to be a fourth down set up, fourth and inches for Utah State. We figured we would see him as well in this game. But Utah State just looking for something here. As we begin the second quarter, the Aggies, reigning champions of the Mountain West Conference, trailing by 14 to the UConn Huskies, who had just one victory all of last season. Independent team in FBS football. Fourth and inches, play action, and a throw gets away from Williams. He would have had the first down. Parker Buchanan, the backup tight end, had daylight. This is part of the perils of bringing in a, a different quarterback package, the old belldozer. Levi Williams is an accurate thrower. We've seen him play very good quarterback at Wyoming. They have him in to run the ball. They tried to catch him off guard, and just a little too much juice for Levi to start this game. Would love to have that one back. Hmm. He was a really good quarterback, too, at Wyoming. Passed for over 2,000 yards. And that huge win over Kent State last year, bowl game. He beat Utah State last yeah. year as the quarterback of Wyoming. And, and you look at what's going on on the UConn side and what they've pulled off and the game so far that their offensive coordinator, young guy, former head coach of Maine, Nick Charlton, has put together. It's been really impressive. Let's see what he does here. Yeah, Huskies take over on downs. Two touchdowns, their first three possessions. And why not go back to Nathan Carter? They can't stop him, but they do strip the ball. And Utah State will have it back. That is a huge break because Carter 
would have been into the clear again. Daniel Greshik, the transfer from Nevada. And Carter with a huge mistake. The Huskies cough it up. And their second turnover of the afternoon. They're trying to keep him motivated and not getting down on the sideline because they're going to need Nathan Carter if they're going to compete throughout this game. A great strip there. And Greshik does a good job of tracking down that ball and diving on it. Well, the UConn defense held after their first turnover, the interception thrown by the freshman Zion Turner. Logan Bonner back into the game for Utah State. And he has Tyler in his hip pocket. He'll give it to Tyler. And Tyler bounces off a tackle. Dalmont Gordine with the stop. Well, you might expect a sloppy game in a lot of respects. The first game of the season, week zero. But, boy, what a missed opportunity for UConn. They've had a couple. They've made some mistakes, a true freshman with the pick. Might be a double pass here. And it's incomplete. Brian Cobbs launching downfield for Josh Sturzer. The one thing that's really jumping out to me, Alex, is you see Utah State trying to do some things to get their offense going, bringing in Levi Williams, throwing a double pass. Every time a UConn player almost makes a tackle or has a tackle broken, there's three other guys flying to the ball. They're really pursuing and playing with a lot of aggression, and it's all led by that guy, Jackson Mitchell, who's made some great plays. Preseason watch list for the Butkus Award. Mitchell, junior from Ridgefield, Connecticut. Physical player out there a ton. Doesn't seem to tire very easily. Bonner on third down, slings it to the sideline, and the catch is made. It'll be a first down for Utah State as Brian Cobbs holds it in. Well, at the last second, this became a different front, and Bonner noticed oh, he went it out. right away. He did go out of bounds. One-on-one -on -one with Caleb Anthony there. Mm. And I say he was pushed out, I guess. On second down, play action, a pass, caught for the touchdown, Kyle Van Leeuwen. And the Aggies are on the board. Something to cheer about for the faithful. Good play fake, really sells it. Confident throw, just flips it over the middle for Van Leeuwen to go up and get. So after a punt, a fumble, another punt, the Aggies with points off the UConn turnover. What would have been another big run for Nathan Carter, but the ball stripped out of his hands. And the Aggies with their first score of the season. Well, we've seen a lot of adversity for both teams so far, and we've seen how those teams have responded to adversity. That's what these coaches preach all camp, because the games never end up perfect. They never end up pretty. Something bad always happens. So you look at Utah State, you know, they've come out and they've been pushed around at the line of scrimmage by UConn throughout the whole beginning of this game and they need to respond. And as far as UConn goes, they've hurt themselves with some turnovers, but they've responded to adversity. They lost their quarterback. Zion Turner comes in, throws a pick, then throws a touchdown. So it's been a really fun drama up and down, and we're only here at the lot of, lot of time to go in the second quarter. I was going to say, there a lot has happened in this game. Look at that student <laughs> section. They finally got something to do. My goodness. They got here early, too, right when the gates opened, a gigantic crowd of them rushing to get the best seats in the house for this week zero matchup. A lot of teams in the Mountain West get that and play Hawaii. Get a waiver from the NCAA. And it'll be a touchback. And we'll see if Nathan Carter can rip off another big run. He has a bunch of them already. 
He's been deep into the secondary because of some very good push from his offensive line and some nifty cutting. He's also caught the ball well out of the backfield. Great eyes. You see him looking downfield. The ball security, though, you see that ball in one hand when the tacklers come up, and that's what ended up getting him with the fumble. See if UConn can overcome that turnover and touchdown, or if that got the Aggies the spark they needed to start their bonfire. Carter has runs of 52, 44, and then 19 before the fumble. Already over 129 yards today. Approaching a career high. Yeah. Zion Turner back into the game. It's an incomplete pass intended for Dejon Harrison, the Texas transfer. I like the call from Nick Charlton, moving people around, making it a manageable throw for the young quarterback. Maybe threw it a little too hard, but either way, probably should have come up with it was Harrison. There's the old main black bear. Up in Orno. This will be a tackle for loss. Brian Bruton getting the call. And a loss of two after Kaleo Nives, the junior from Provo, makes the stop. Van Leeuwen with the touchdown catch, another Provo product. Nevs, a junior, disrupting that play early. Now this is really the first time you've heard that boisterous Aggie student section all afternoon. Third and 12. Turner remains in the game for UConn. Drops back, feels the heat, gets rid of it. It's on the ground. An incomplete pass. Daniel Greshik brought the heat, and it'll be a three and out for the Huskies. They call a screen play, something safe. Third and 12, not where UConn wants to be with the style of offense they've been running in this game. They try to run a little bit of a double screen, a good job by Turner just to eat the ball, throw it away, and punt it. But now you start to worry about the conditioning of the UConn D. So Utah State with their first real defensive stand of the game. Forcing a three and out. And George Karatan, the punter. This will take. A UConn roll and gets muffed. Cooper Jones nearly coughed it up. Whoa. Utah State's defense finally coming up with a good, trailing by seven. All right, Rob. Some people are picking North uh, the Nebraska to compete in the Big Ten West this year. Like, for a division title. Still early. <laughs> it's week zero. I get it. But zero. Even so disappointing Yikes. for Coach Frost. Yeah. After he had his contract restructured and everything. Bonner throws and completes for the seventh time this afternoon. He's now seven for nine. Justin McGriff catches it at the sticks. And that's a guy they expect to pick up a lot of the slack in the wide receiver core. Six foot six is McGriff, and that's how Bonner usually plays it. Balls out right away. First down, momentum. There's Tyler. We'll scamper ahead here. Give him three on the play. The Utah State offense is a lot like their defense. They kind of stack successful plays. And when something happens like that, no gain, it slows down their momentum and allows the defense to get a little bit of their feet under them. Tyler again, and he'll cross the 40-yard line. You know, their, their offensive coordinator, Anthony Tucker, had a little bit of time at UCF, three seasons there. And you could probably see a few hallmarks in their style, which was a carryover when Scott Frost was the coach at UCF. It's a high-flying deal. I mean, this is an air raid offense. They, they get the ball out, they attack the defense, but they need to build momentum upon momentum. 
and UConn's done a great job of slowing momentum down. They're facing another third and four after sure. two pretty good stops. Tyler gets nothing. Well, that was a third down play, and it's fourth down approaching midfield, and Utah State's going to bring their punting unit on. Jackson Mitchell has been a terror out there. He's in on every tackle, and Ian Swenson, number six, the, the middle linebacker, has been cleaning up some of the missed tackles. These guys are really rallying to the football, and... Aggies after it. Aggies are just one for five on third down this afternoon. Line drive punt. That takes a Utah State hop out of bounds at the 10-yard line. And UConn's defense again. Holding tough. 14-7. It's been a minute or two since UConn last won a road game. 2019, fellow independent, wow. UMass in Amherst, Silent H, dominated. And the men said five touchdowns. UConn scored 56 points. It's been that guy and his linebacking core, Jackson Mitchell, Ian Swenson, Boyer Randall. Bembry, they've all made plays led by Jackson Mitchell and Jim Morris' defense. Well, freshman Zion Turner completes over the middle. And again, UConn is having their way offensively. It's the tight end, Russell Dixon. Move the quarterback, get him comfortable. 19 yards for Dixon. I mean, they're shredding this Utah State defense. Charlton knows what his young quarterback is comfortable with, and he's finding it ever since that first turnover. Yeah. Yeah. Tried to cut back. Stood up behind the line. Able to surge ahead again. Let's take a look at the freshman working. Little play fake to hold the linebackers. Tight end squirts out, makes a move. Ball security at the end. UConn came to play in the first half. Over 200 yards of offense now. No gain on the play, second down and 10. And it remains Zion Turner at quarterback. Play clock to two. Here's the snap. Turner rolls left and throws it out of bounds. play by the quarterback. Some of these throwaways from Turner have been some of the best throws of the day for UConn. Just living to call another play and not make mistakes. That's a nice recovery for the freshman on his first pass sure was. through an interception. Third and ten for the 29. Quick throw. It's caught. Bruton. Cuts it back and surges ahead after breaking the first tackle. A.J. Carter finally brought him down. It's a first down for the Huskies. A big third down conversion. They are now three for six on third down this afternoon. What a violent run by Brian Bruton. They, they get in these third and long situations. They've been calling screens to keep Zion Turner comfortable. One of them blew up. That one was developed well. He got the ball to Bruton, but Bruton did it all himself. Fighting for that first down. Inspiring. Make your partners even better. They're three for five on third down. Turner taking a shot. First time today. And overthrows his man. There's been a number change for UConn. So I don't have 86 down here. So this might be a, a player. Might be Dejon Harrison. We'll have to double check here. The Johnny Carter. All the way across the field. They try to get him on a. Opposite corner route, kind of, and no P.I. because I believe the ball was uncatchable. Second down. Kevin's Clercius was the intended target. Nathan Carter gets a yard here. 
But you got to like it taking a shot, though. You have an opportunity here. Second you have quarter. to. You yeah. have to give that quarterback the confidence, and you have to keep those safeties for Utah State honest because your run game has been very successful, and they're going to be creeping up. So very smart by Charlton to go deep just so they can look at it. So after a one-yard gain, it's third down and nine. And again, the Huskies three for five this afternoon. Tough for the young quarterback, though, these third and long situations. Turner feels pressure and throws it away. Got rid of it quickly. An incomplete pass, fourth down, and the Huskies will punt. Well, you can see he's very eager to get rid of the ball on those third and longs. Nathan Carter with his back to him there in protection. And Turner just threw it at his back. Punting for UConn has not been the end of the world because their defense has played so well throughout this game, and they can flip the field here. This is George Karatan, the Arkansas transfer. So this is a pretty good punt, too. Fielded at about the 11 by Cooper Jones. And he'll get a couple of yards on the return. 49-yard punt, four-yard return. Can the Aggies make a pushback to tie this game second quarter? Well, Logan Bonner, solid so far, you'd have to say. He hasn't taken over. And usually at this point, they've done more offensively. He's gotten the ball to Cobbs. He's still looking for those wide receivers, Cal Van Leeuwen. Steps up with the touchdown catch. Finally getting to his big target out on the edge, McGriff. But look at what they've lost. Yeah. A lot of production out the window for Utah State from last season. Bowling was unbelievable yeah. in the conference championship game. And Tompkins was lights out all year. I also had a heck of a kick return saving Scarver. Bonner steps up. And Bonner, head first slide. A little awkward. Gain of about two. And he's a little shaken yeah, up there. Yeah, he is. That he might have fallen on the ball, which knocks the wind out of you pretty good. Looks like he did. Well, let's see if UConn's defense can again measure up. They flipped the field. They started on their own 10 last possession. 49-yard punt. Utah State beginning at their own 14. Robert Briggs in the backfield for the Aggies here. Second down and eight. Bonner gets rid of it quickly, and it skips off the hands of Kyle Van Leeuwen. Incomplete third down. Jim Morris and Jackson Mitchell flying into the backfield because he saw Bonner was a little shaken up there on first down, and I believe it affected the throw. Jackson Mitchell was relentless. He's He's been... A stud today for the Huskies. And you see the pace just isn't there. The edge, the, the crispness is not there for the Aggies offense. And they're at home. Honor well protected and completes on a crossing pattern to get the first down. It's Cobbs to move the chains. 12 yards. Nice recovery by Bonner there as we have an injured Husky. Is that Ian Swenson? Ian Swenson, yeah. This is just a one-on-one -on -one deal. Caleb Anthony has to go take care of the guy on the hitch, which brings Cobbs open. Well-designed play from the OC, Anthony Tucker. Ian Swenson, veteran for this UConn team. He's stuck with this program through and through. Getting some medical attention here. He's you know, played in nearly every UConn game since redshirting in 2017, staying with the program through that canceled season. Absolutely, Alex. And we see him getting up under his own power there, looking at his left uh, arm. He's shaking it around. But th both of these teams have a lot of stories like that. Uh, UConn's situation was very much like Utah State's situation last year. New coach, whole bunch of new guys on the roster. There was some tumult and some bad feelings with the previous regime. And it's great to see the mix between the transfers and the guys that stuck it out, creating a new team. And, that, and that's a big part of modern college football. Now. Yeah. Swenson with seven tackles today. He exits. First down for the Aggies. Yeah, they're on 29. 
Bonner now 8 of 11, 100 yards. But Utah State crucially trailing by 7 in a game where they were heavily favored. Briggs surges ahead to pick up about 5. Give him 6 in the end. Briggs, not a big guy, 5'6", 175, but he has been the most physical runner of the day thus far for Utah State. Bryce Yates was in on the stop along with Brandon Boyer-Randall. Second and four. Alani. Again, it's Briggs, but a flag comes in. Oh, what a physical tackle there by Durante Jones, the sophomore. We'll check the penalty marker here. False start, number 78, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Utah State, not a heavily penalized team last year. About 55 yards a game. League and NCAA average, roughly. That's on Jacob South. This is his 16th career start. So it's second and nine now. From the 30, shovel pass to Briggs. And he has a first down, nearing midfield. Jackson Mitchell finally brought him down after a 17-yard gain. Now what Blake Anderson's team has done is flip the field back, back to the 50-yard line. Utah State with a little bit of momentum. Still not working as quickly as, no. as we thought that they would. Bonner to the near side, and he connects with Van Leeuwen, who slips a couple of tackles inside the 30, and down to the UConn 23. Durante Jones with a tackle. There's a chunk play for the Aggies. That relentless spread out attack, and you rely on missed tackles. There's two right there, and Van Leeuwen able to get a big chunk and a good threat for the Aggies going. 31 yards and a first down. Briggs untouched into the end zone. And Utah State an extra point away from tying this game. Well, that's how fast it can happen. And just when we said they weren't playing fast and they weren't showing the pace, they start getting it fast. Pace. Right up the gut, Jacob South leading through. Briggs with a good physical run for a smaller guy took over that drive. First career touchdown for the true freshman from Belleville, Texas. Capping a seven play, 86 yard drive. And in Utah State fashion, one that lasted less than three minutes. Tie game. Have the Aggies finally found their game offensively. From down 14 nothing. Brand new game. All right, 14-14. And Utah State rattling off 14 unanswered. 86-yard drive. A couple of big plays mixed in there, and we're all square. Really contrasting styles here between Coach Mora talking to his OC there, Charlton, and Coach Anderson. Who wants this ball <laughs> off the kickoff? So for UConn, after Devontae Houston brings this out, let's see. It, you mentioned it. There have been so many you know, big moments in this game already. They've faced adversity on multiple occasions. Well, now they've conceded 14 unanswered points on the road. What do they do? They need to reestablish their run game. They need to run some clock. They cannot give the ball back to Bonner before the end of the half in a situation where they can score and they can score from anywhere because that defense is tired and they need to regroup. So right now, this UConn offense has to possess the ball. That's the most important part of this. It's a throw off the hands of Robert Burns. Zion Turner remaining in a quarterback, the true freshman from Florida. He had a couple of Opportunities on the table to, to back up at larger programs, but decided to commit to UConn. Liked the school, 
wanted to be part of a rebuilding effort, well, wanted playing time. Generally regarded yeah. as the future of the program, and they're just trying to keep him calm and within the offense right now. Hunter hands it off, and it's Houston up to about the 28-yard line, a gain of four, and it's third down. Still some really physical hitting going on around the line of scrimmage, and that was a good, strong run by Houston, setting up a more manageable third down for the young quarterback. You want to recruit in the Division I program, you got to go to places like Roanoke, Alaska to find guys for your program. Especially as an FBS independent, you got to find different ways to piece together a roster. Third down. Turner gets away from the pressure. Turner throws and tiptoeing the sideline to make the catch is Russell Dixon, but it's an incompletion. They say he was out. He was bobbling it as he went out of bounds. Otherwise, it would have been a catch and a brilliant improvisation by Turner. There is a flag here and a hat off, which means somebody went out of bounds. Turner, a good job turning out of that, regaining his balance, turning his shoulders, finding a receiver on the edge. Illegal touching, number 86 of the offense. That penalty is a loss of down at the previous spot. Fourth down. So he went out of bounds already and then yeah. came back in. They just had the number wrong, 85. Russell Dixon from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Another independent recruit. Yeah, exactly. Huh? <laughs> Sun doesn't set till about 10:30 there at night in the summer. But the Huskies forced to punt here. And a fair catch is signaled at the 34-yard line. 2:41 to go in the first half, and Utah State has pushed back here. Now tied at 14. Coming up at the half, Northwestern with the stunner over Nebraska. Some national title favorites. I'm not as stunned as others. Really? No. In Dublin, Ireland, who knows what's going to happen out there? <laughs> James Joyce hey. might start taking snaps. The Huskers took over the town. <laughs> Based on what we were saying, it was about 85% Nebraska fans, but thankfully there are, there are plenty of pubs for them to drown their sorrows in. So Utah State looking for their first lead of the ball game. This is the worst case scenario for UConn, having to defend again at the end of the half. <laughs> Play action. Bonner throws near sideline, and Van Leeuwen makes the catch for a first down. And now that spread is starting to work. You're starting to see more wide open players. Bonner knows exactly what he wants to do with the ball right after he gets it in his hands. Give him 12 yards. Here's Tyler. And Tyler got a nice block. They'll rumble up into UConn territory. Jackson Mitchell again to hand in on the tackle. And just little mistakes, right? Little attention to detail things that kept UConn from possessing the ball. The illegal touch, the bobble going out of bounds. After the gain of nine, this will be a first down and more for Tyler. Across the UConn 30, Malik Dixon finally stops him. But now some momentum is being built up by Utah State. A flag comes in late. Chris Schoen came in and tried to make that tackle, but didn't wrap up like we were talking about earlier. And the bounce off yards were plentiful. He knocked down his man earlier, but that's not going to cut it. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number one of the defense. That penalty's half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. This is number one's first unsportsmanlike foul. That counts for disqualification. There he is, Malik Dixon. What did he do? I pushed him over there. And that's a loss of composure here. This is a very, very critical time for UConn as you start to feel the wheels shaking. Aggies now over 300 yards for the game. Happens fast, doesn't it? It does. 
Bonner looking in zone, back shoulder, up for grabs. Caught for the touchdown. Justin McGriff in the corner of the end zone. And Utah State has the lead for the first time this afternoon. A deep corner and a gigantic target in the senior out of Tampa, Florida. Six foot six. And Bonner looks at him the whole way after the play fake. Floats it beautifully. And let's look at the feet. That foot, oh. the left foot looks like it's in. The officials are both right on it. A late flag comes out on Wortham with the push. Well, this is what we figured Utah State was capable of. They are going to review this. The previous play of a touchdown is under further review. 20 unanswered points this quarter for the Aggies, a team that averaged about 33 last year per game. Just a high arcing ball because of the size advantage Bonner knows that his receiver has. And Now there he is. Touchdown. Perfect shot. I got him in. You got him in? Got him in. Good. I mean, I need Dean to make sure. Just showed a replay on the video board here. Justin McGriff, one of the top returning targets for Utah State. There aren't a lot of receivers that are returning. We talked about that already. But he caught 35 passes for six touchdowns last year. So I got him in. Petro has him in. Well, this is a beautiful shot here. You can see the blue. Just a very small amount of blue behind that white cleat. You know, it's not like Kevin McHale with the white shoes at the white three-point line at Boston Garden. We got better shots now. And that was definitive. Three touchdowns in under 11 minutes for Utah State. And again, they trailed early in a lot of their games last year. And at the half, in 8 of 14. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands, touchdown. Well, they have come back from down 14-0 to reestablish some semblance of order here as we approach the end of the half. Now, if you're UConn, you can't go three and out again. I mean, you absolutely cannot. Utah State's got all three of their timeouts. You don't want to end up, after the first half had so many positives, down two scores going into the locker room. 21-14. Utah State has surged back to take the lead in Logan. UConn opened up a 14-0 lead in this game. But their last four drives have not been nearly as good. Fumble and three punts. And look at the difference wow. in the second quarter. Man. That's the most first half yards for Utah State since 2019. Whoa, Bruton gets lit up on the return. Max Alford. What a shot. Young man out of Park City, Utah. And as we talked about the Aggies and their way of playing, that attacking style, stacking plays, stacking momentum, special teams is part of that as well. If they can get a three and out here, Logan Bonner's licking his chops. Oh, yeah. All three timeouts still. Uh, they are plenty capable. So now the Huskies, who scored two touchdowns in their first three drives of the game. But Taquan Roberson, their starting quarterback, has been knocked out. Pitch here to Nathan Carter. He's been their best running back. And Carter, how explosive has he been today? Did they need that? Yes, they did. 14 yards and a first down. A little short toss there to Carter, and he's able to exploit the hole. and. Get a hold of the ball and keep the clock running, most importantly. Now up over a career high in rushing yards for Carter today. 
Hand off again to number 28, Brian Bruton. Brian Bruton gets the call here. Flag comes in. Let's see what this is about. Clock stops with a minute 24 left in the half. Nathan Carter now up over 140 yards rushing today. He said he was a little bit banged up in fall camp. He might get fewer reps today. Uh, <laughs> there are two fouls on the play, both after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number six, defense, number seven, offense. Those penalties will offset. This is the first unsportsmanlike for both individuals. That counts towards disqualification. Something to keep an eye on. We had the unsportsmanlike with UConn defensively. Oh, the old receiver DB Correction fight. Correction five for the offense. I was doing that to Alex right before the game. It got a little chippy. <laughs> <You> <laughs> That's old, our warm-up routine. Yeah, the old four-finger. <laughs> Except I'm wearing glasses. At least I'm protection. All right. Clock restarts. Approaching a minute to go in the half. And Turner stumbles behind the line. Timeout for Utah State. Reshik caused that. He stayed home, didn't buy the fake, and was right in the face of Zion Turner when he completed the fake. And there was nowhere for him Timeout, to go but Utah down. Timeout, Utah State. It's their first of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. Loss of four. Watch Greshik does not come down at all, and that puts Turner in a bind. Another big third down. I mean, this is UConn started out three for five. I mean, not converted their last two third downs. The third down game for UConn offensively has really consisted of a lot of screens. Yeah. Trying to get the ball to the backs. I wonder if it would have been different had Roberson still been in the game. Well, they'll be writing about that in UConn tomorrow, yeah. perhaps, but not easy to go into a place like this and face that kind of adversity, losing your starting quarterback early. But Zion Turner's been pretty good as a true freshman. UConn was the worst team in FBS football on third down last year. And they're not going to convert this one. Houston lit up in the backfield. A.J. Vompachon. And Byron Vaughn's both there. And with 61 seconds left in the half and two timeouts for Utah State, timeout. the Huskies Utah will punt. Utah State's their second of the half. Pretty safe This call is a 30-second timeout. For UConn, but way too much penetration there from Byron Vaughn's, the junior who started his career at Texas as a Longhorn. Guy out of Fort Worth. Makes a nice play. Teammates are there to clean it up for him. And Logan Bonner's got another chance in the first half. Who would have known the way this game started? <laughs> you tempt fates. And that might happen. The Huskies with two turnovers this half. This one, they'll punt back to Utah State. We'll have one timeout and a little under a minute to work with. Awfully close to a delay of game. Cooper Jones back to receive. And about the 43-yard line, it will take a Utah State hop. And it'll be a short field, 52 seconds after a 27-yard punt and one timeout for the Aggies to try to build on this lead. Well, the Aggies can smell that blood in the water, and they have started to get that offense rolling forward, and once it starts rolling downhill, it's awful hard to stop. The Huskies have got to find one, one iota of the juice they had in the first quarter to find a way to regroup in the locker room and not give up more points here. Utah State starting on the plus side of midfield. Run play is blown up. Alvin Tyler got the call and went nowhere. 
Loss of one, Marquez Bember. And good linebacker play from UConn most of all this half, and that's a good start for them. Bonner, two-step drop, wide open far sideline. Brian Cobbs turns up field, has a first down. Clock will stop to move the chains, 28 seconds. Miles Bell had about 12 yards of cushion on Cobbs there. Unbelievably wide open for Bonner. 19 yards on the completion. Clock moves once again, about 20 seconds remaining. Bonner takes off, slides, and calls timeout. Good awareness. That's an experienced quarterback. Slides right in front of Bembry. Gets up and knows exactly what he has to do. Look at this cushion. I mean, I know Cobbs is good, but... <laughs> Check out Miles Bell just in a full bail technique. And so much room to work for Cobbs. And you got your Aggies offense threatening again. Final timeout taken with 16 seconds. Now the ball at the UConn 28. Well within field goal range, should it come down to that, but the Aggies. I, I agree. This is their style. Smelling blood in the water, a team that starting to fatigue on the other side, starting to become a little bit rattled on the road. And we've seen it in all three phases. Yeah. Defensively, special teams, stacking success and attacking. That is Blake Anderson's style, and it's, it's caught fire in the Mountain West. They've been successful since he showed up. I'm sure there are Alabama fans who are watching this game. That's where Utah State will be next week. We looked at the first quarter and said, whoa, this this could be easy pickings, but maybe feel like they could run the ball. <laughs> yeah, I said, well, that still may be the case, but we'll see. Bonner, that was miscommunication or just throwing it away. Facing some pressure. He you know he's he's got one more shot at the end zone. Clock stops with 10 seconds. Third down and nine. Would you go across the middle here and see if you can spike it? Or do you run They're the pretty good at playing fast, but I think he's going to throw this one to the end zone. Oh. Now he'll throw it incomplete. Not sure where that was supposed to be. There was a man, Kyle Van Leeuwen, in the end zone, but was not targeted. And with six seconds left in the half, Utah State will attempt a field goal here. They're so sophisticated offensively that a lot of these reads change after the snap. That time Bonner was on a different page than Van Leeuwen. Van Leeuwen wanted the end zone. Bonner wanted him to hold up and spike it like you want it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, from our vantage point, it seems pretty easy, right? <laughs> Everything seems easy. That altitude will get you there. Yeah, we, yes. This will be a 45-yard attempt for Connor Coles. Six of 11 for his career from this range. Line drive and through. And the Aggies lead 24-14 with one second remaining in the half. Well, 24 unanswered points, but it was not a good start for the Aggies by any means on either side of the ball. Well, I think Coach Mora's game plan, the two different quarterbacks, the aggressive running style, the great linebacker play defensively, I think that put the Aggies on their heels a little bit early. But like you said, Alex, they've played from behind a whole bunch. They're very comfortable knowing that they can come back quickly in a game. Obviously, they love playing at home in this altitude. And Coach Mora has got a lot of talking to do at halftime to keep his team's confidence up. Yeah. Well, last year, Utah State rallied from down double digits six times to win en route to an 11 and three season, seven and two Mountain West. And they begin this season receiving votes in the AP poll. 
Last year, three teams in the state of Utah finished ranked in the final AP poll. And this team, UConn, is on the long road back to respectability. Well, you can really argue that Utah in Salt Lake and, of course, the Aggies and Logan are experiencing the best football in their history. Yeah. The, the, the most consistent and best. And, of course, BYU's been a mainstay for years. The Beehive State is alive with football. 125th season of Utah State football. Got off to a rocky start. But 24 unanswered points for the Aggies. And they are back in business. Leading by 10 at the half, we'll join Rob Stone in the studio for our State Farm halftime right after this.